We're now entering the, depending on how you want to count it, the second or third generation of electronic health records. Uh, through federal incentives, a lot of organizations that were on paper are now on electronic records. A lot of smaller practices, ambulatory practice. I mean, hospitals mostly had something, but a lot of the multi-specialty practices have been pushed onto electronic records, which is a good thing, but it, it's led to a lot of shortage of people who know how to do that and a lot of product changes. And with the changes in the economics of healthcare, we're really looking at needing to handle the data differently. I mean, we've historically focused on clinical things, making the patients better, enabling the doctors. Now we're focused on population health management, a lot of the financial aspects, uh, the new reimbursement models, and that's led to huge amounts of changes and the need for analytics, people who can take data and analyze it and make business recommendations or you know, figure out, predict, would, if we choose to do this, what will the outcome be? Part of the challenge when you're doing these type of data, I, I often tell my staff uh, when we're asked to do a project or do something, uh, they'll all, they'll, somebody will ask us, well, can you do that? And I al always tell them that's the wrong question. It isn't can we do that because we can do just about anything with a computer if we want to and if we have the time. The question is should we do that? Is the outcome of what we're wanting to do going to really be beneficial? Because a lot of these programs that people come up with sound good on paper, but you have, need people to do an analysis of what's the real outcome, and is that benefit going to actually improve the care of the patient, or, uh, to be frank, reduce the cost of providing the care that gets them to that level, or is it not, really? Uh, and there's a lot of stuff out there that's effective and a lot that's not, and that's one of the cautionary tales is, at the end of the day, our hospital isn't about IT. We're a hospital, we're about treating people, we're about making people better, maintaining their health, and helping them have better lives, no matter what they're trying to overcome. So what projects bring the most bang for the buck to actually meeting that goal? And uh, that's one of the things that sometimes we forget about. What's the real end of the day value? Patients are an interesting case. Uh, there's a ton of information flowing around about patients, and we as providers can look at ways to use that data to improve the care we offer to the patients. But kind of the dirty little secret is, you want patients to be engaged, but some patients just are going to ignore you no matter what you do. And you don't want to spend your resources and time and effort on those patients. They need, require really direct face-to-face -face interaction to get them to do something. Using data, however, you can look at patients who respond to certain things, whether it's gamification or a discount or just a challenge, a, a little badge on an application for taking steps or, or eating yogurt instead of bacon. Um, those patients who are interested in that, you can get good results through systems, right? Uh, incentivizing them towards the behavior that will make them better. But there are always going to be that subset who won't do this. So don't spend your time trying to work with the people who are going to ignore you. Spend your resources on the people who you can actually impact. And that's one of the things that you find out as you start looking at the outcomes of a lot of these programs that people are trying. I don't have a, a particular uh, ax to grind about this tool, that tool, or the other tool. But the ability to take data to understand data, to understand the quality of the data, to aggregate it together from different sources, even if it's just in Excel, to analyze it, basic statistical capabilities. So you can take a set of data and determine something more than what the mean is, so that you can look at trends, you can look at uh, frequency distributions. And this is, you know, we're talking graduate level statistics here, we're talking pretty straightforward stuff that tells you, okay, we've got a pool of data, it means this, or we have a hypothesis, we want to try this, how will we know if it's working or not? Those are the skills, if people have those skills, we can use them. Oh yes, uh, we certainly have a shortage of people. One of the, uh, as a CIO of a, a pretty good sized hospital, one of my major challenges is staffing. Uh, it's getting the right people, it's keeping them, uh, it's keeping their careers moving forward so they're happy. Uh, and that's a, that's a big challenge for us, finding people. Uh, in addition to my work uh, at the hospital, I also teach. And one of the reasons I teach uh, is to get to train that next generation of people we can come in. And at 
Uh, in our particular program, we have about one-third clinicians, one-third people already in HIT and some stripe, and then one-third people who are uh, technical but from a different industry or looking to move in. And there are opportunities for all of them.